In 1961, an impoverished white man, Clarence Earl Gideon, was arrested for breaking and entering, with intent to commit petty larceny, with only a sole witness accusation as evidence. Gideon could not afford a defense lawyer in the court, who did not provide one. Gideon represented himself and was sentenced to five years in prison. From his jail cell with only a pencil and paper, Clarence Gideon appealed to the Supreme Court on the deprivation of the Sixth Amendment right. This appeal would change the whole machinery of the American legal system. The Sixth Amendment of the United States Constitution requires that the government appoint or pay the defendant's legal expenses. This is in principle with the right to counsel equating to a fair trial. My presentation is the importance of Gideon v. Wainwright's ruling of the Sixth Amendment in tandem with the Fourteenth Amendment, establishing due process at the state level during the era of Jim Crow laws and the Civil Rights Movement. The Sixth Amendment was included in the Bill of Rights in the Constitution in reaction to American colonists' experience with British common law during the Revolutionary War. The Founding Fathers included the Sixth Amendment, reasoning that the government would use all of its resources to convict individuals. The Sixth Amendment was included to counterbalance the government's power. While the Sixth Amendment applied to the federal government, it did not apply to the states. The first ruling in which the Sixth Amendment was applied to the states was in Powell v. Alabama in 1932 the Scottsboro Boys. The Scottsboro Boys case was infamous because of its discrimination towards the nine African-American defendants who were accused of raping two white women. The defendants were denied counsel by the state and were too poor to afford their own. All nine defendants were convicted and sentenced to death. An outside appeal to the Supreme Court by an African-American rights advocates group helped overturn. The rulings based on the failure to provide counsel denied the Sixth Amendment right to the defendants. This case established precedent that all states must provide counsel to defendants charged with capital offense. While Powell v. Alabama was a win for a procedural due process, the courts would go on to reverse their decision in Betts v. Brady in 1942. The Supreme Court ruled that states did not have to provide indignant defendants and that the 14th Amendment did not guarantee the entirety of the 6th Amendment. In Supreme Decisions, Constitutional Cases and Their Impact, it is noted by the author that the Supreme Court declared that they would review appeals based on the right to counsel on a case-by-case basis in wake of Betts v. Brady. Though leading up to Gideon v. Wainwright, the court found few occurrences where deprivation of counsel did not affect the trial. Around the time preceding Gideon v. Wainwright, there was a growing movement within the law community to overturn Betts v. Brady. All that was needed was a case to catalyze the implementation of Gideon v. Wainwright significance is tied with its cultural and historical context leading up to its decision. The case was decided during the 60s civil rights movement in the challenging era of Jim Crow laws. The case itself challenged the deprivation of the Sixth Amendment in the state of Florida to indignant defendants. Given the proportion of wealth in the South, minority communities, such as African Americans, were disproportionately denied counsel in their trials. Gideon v. Wainwright helped establish a greater fairness within the courts by providing counsel and a defense to poorer defenders in marginalized communities. In wake of the ruling, the entire mechanism of the American law system would be completely overhauled. In Chasing Gideon and Free Justice, the books lend insight into the overworked and underpaid sector of public defending that services 80% of criminal defendants in the United States. These public defenders are protecting the right to counsel and defense to marginalized communities in the pursuit of due process and a fair trial. Gideon v. Wainwright had an influence on cases succeeding. Most notably, Gideon v. Wainwright is paired with Miranda v. Arizona as the two most influential cases in procedural due process. Procedural due process had not been fully guaranteed prior to the ruling and had left opportunity for state's discretion. The ruling has been impactful in nullifying and preventing discriminatory laws, laws and practices within the United States in its wake.